Good morning, I'm Kristen Van Dyke. And I'm Elias Gallegos, the face of Fox, in for Nikki Stanzione. And this is New Mexico Style. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. It's today's a, flag day, so I thought I'd... It is a flag day. Did you? Are you celebrating? I am. I always celebrate flag day. Every day. All right. <laughs> it's also new Chick-fil-A in yes. town day. Woo. Do you eat chicken? I do. Lots of it. But do you eat Chick-fil-A? I have not tried Chick-fil-A yet. Heard that <laughs> I think I'm in trouble with Kristen. I cannot know. Okay, this is like one of my favorite fast food restaurants. I can't believe you haven't ever had Chick-fil-A ever. I have a feeling I'm going to get an opportunity today. You are. There's a bag over there. I'm going to force you to eat one before yes, the day I can. is over, and you're going to be addicted. addicted. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, yeah, basically, new Chick-fil-A, which is about time, mm -hmm. because the two that we had in Albuquerque were always nonstop packed. So we have another one. And this morning, to celebrate the opening of it, 100 Albuquerqueans got free Chick-fil-A for a year when the new store opened this morning at San Whoa. Mateo and Montgomery. For well, a year. Apparently, people have been lining up since yesterday to take advantage of this offer. The San Mateo location is one of 96 stores the company plans to open this year across the country and is the third standalone restaurant here in New Mexico. And according to the fast food company, they've given away more than $16 million worth of food at these grand openings through the years. The company also says that they've awarded more than $30 million in scholarships since 1973. And New Mexico has received about $70,000 of wow. scholarship money since the program was implemented here. Wow, so. that's that's quite a lot of money and, and mm -hmm. a whole bunch of food and a, for obviously for a good cause it is for a good cause and I'm just and I'm excited about that and, and the good food too of course Make it yeah I can tell she's been very excited <laughs> I wonder if uh, another young lady across the way is, ex is excited about this let's check in with news anchor KRQE News 13 anchor Elizabeth Alvarez for this morning headlines good morning Elizabeth hey good morning you know what I'm excited about when it comes to Chick-fil-a is the playground. Uh, boy, oh. does my son love the Chick-fil-A playground. Every time I go in there, the one off the sale, it is packed. It, it doesn't is. matter what time of day it is, it is packed. So Chick-fil-A rocks. Well, I have a feeling I'm a new fan. Yeah, you gotta try one of their chicken sandwiches. Can you believe, believe he's never had Leas, one? Leas, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I'll Goodness. get it together someday with, with the help from you ladies. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Well, good morning to you at home. We do have some developing news to get to this morning. There is a new wildfire that is being reported. Four service crews right now are headed to the Monzano Mountains after getting reports of a fire near Monzano. We also have a crew on the way to check this fire out and we'll keep you updated on any new developments uh, should we get any. And uh, let's talk the Little Bear Fire burning near Ruidoso now. Some good news to tell you. Highway 48 between Capitan and Ruidoso is now open. So is the Santara Subdivision, Caprock Court and Pine Hill Loop. The Little Bear Fire has burned more than 37,000 acres now. Firefighters do have it now 40% contained, so they are making some progress. The fire has affected the very popular ski resort of Ski Apache. Flames damaged part of the ski area, but we're told that the buildings are still standing and that the resort will stay open or will be open for this winter. We also know now that the fire has destroyed more than 200 homes. Some families are just finding out about that. And, you know, some of them are pretty lucky, like Janet Johnson. Uh, they, Janet Johnson tells us she's begun heading home. We told you yesterday how she told us she originally learned from seeing Sky Ranger video that her home was still standing in the middle of the fire zone. Yesterday, she was escorted back to her home by sheriff deputies, and she tells us how close the Little Bear Fire came to leveling her home. It was pretty incredible. Many evacuees are getting anxious just to go home, and we're told that the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office will have the final say on when all the evacuated areas can be reopened. The Animal Shelter in Ruidoso, by the way, needs your help this morning if you can help them out. The Lincoln County Animal Shelter is so overwhelmed with dogs and cats that it has to ship pets to uh, try to get them adopted at shelters in El Magordo to make room for the evacuated animals. Plus, it's worried a lot of animals in Lincoln County may be left behind. If you can help out, please check out our website. The, the Sheriff's Office is now taking donations to help with all the extra work as well. You can find out how to help by going to our website, as I mentioned. That's krqe.com. Just head to the news link section. On a slightly different note, a dog named Blue from Elephant Butte 
is anything but that this morning. Listen to this. The debate over Blue's fate really began last month in Elephant Butte on whether or not this stray Australian cattle dog should be allowed to roam leash free. You see, the dog would do so in front of the general store there and was seen somewhat of a mascot for the small community. But what happened was the city cited the owners for the store because apparently the whole situation was violating animal control laws. But yesterday at a city council meeting, the owners of that store said, hey, they were going to take up ownership of Blue. And in return, you know what happened? The city councilor said they would try to adjust the law to allow for invins uh, invisible fencing so that blue can still roam free on their property so good news there for blue and good news for the owners of that store the owners get a dog and the dog gets to stay awesome that wraps it up for your Thursday morning headlines be sure to catch Matt Morrow Kristen Van Dyke and me every weekday morning on KRQE News 13 beginning at 4:30 a.m. all right Nikki Elias I'm gonna send it back to you <laughs> thank, right. thank you thank Thanks. you Elizabeth <laughs> and I love you blue <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it was such a happy ending to that story. You were, well, I was wondering how they were going to kind of work that out, and it sounds like they did. Yeah, so, good well, it's great. They're working a lot of things out here in New Mexico. Yeah. And here at New Mexico Style, we celebrate our state's traditions and heritage. And the beef industry is one of those traditions that the biannual Gate to Plate Tour is a crash course in New Mexico rich ranching history. Mm -hmm. Hosted okay. by the New Mexico Beef Council, right. the tour takes an enthusiastic busload of media, industry experts, and deci decision makers to experience a few days in the life of a New Mexico cattleman. And last month, I had the privilege of joining the 2012 Gate to Plate Tour, and it visited a few of our state's lasting legacies. It was amazing. Ranching along the Santa Fe Trail is nothing new here in New Mexico and has been a way of life around these parts for hundreds of years. I was invited to be a part of the New Mexico Beef Council's 2012 Gate to Plate Tour and I learned a lot about the traditions, about new technology, and about some really wonderful New Mexican families. The Twin Creek Ranch, also found in beautiful Harding County, is owned and operated by the five-generation Clavel family. Twin Creek Ranch is truly the stuff legends are made of. The ranch has made it through the Dust Bowl, drought, and floods. From patriarch Jody to great-granddaughter Riley Joe, the Clavals left a life-lasting impression on me. I left feeling more proud to be an American, plus I even got the opportunity to roll my sleeves up and earn my keep. Historically, New Mexico is a sheep producing area. It started with the flocks brought over by the Spaniards in the 1600s, but the cattle ranching industry didn't really get firmly established until the 1870s in an era known as the famous trail drive era. Trails like Goodnight Loving in eastern New Mexico, Chisholm Trail in Texas, and another trail I've come to love, known as the Santa Fe Trail. Cattle ranching has made tremendous changes since that romantic era of the 1870s. And another thing that still proves true today is that cattle ranching in New Mexico is still one of the most prominent cogs in this agricultural wheel that makes this great state move. Established in 1886, the Mitchells, Tecuskeet Ranch in Harding County began the transition from a conventional ranch to a holistic resource management ranch in 1992, which means the ranch hands will work cattle in corrals designed with the assistance of the famed Dr. Temple Grandin animal behaviorist. Basically, cattle graze in circular patterns, and that is how these corrals were designed. We're out here driving around the Tesakeet Ranch, and the Mitchell family who's hosting us has been most generous. They also have been breeding quarter horses for over 60 years, and there's just not too many things that are prettier than this. With this landscape, these ponies in the background, it brings visions of the Old West to my mind, and I'm sure it does to yours as well. The ranch is operated by fourth generation ranchers, which is a theme in this line of work. The Tecuskeet Ranch is operated by the most modern computer automated animal identification system available today. It is no secret that perhaps no other family has had a greater impact on ranching life and on the West. On the road again, I just can't wait to get on that road again. The T.O. Ranch is one of the most legendary and enduring ranches established in 1864. The T.O. Ranch was founded by Antoine J. Maloche of Quebec. They call this amazing slice of the Old West the T.O. Ranch, which is short for Tony. This renowned ranch gained its notoriety in the 1930s with what was known as the Hertford Herd, and then went on to establish itself as a producer of prize-winning cattle. Following the succession of the owners, not to mention enduring what seemed like endless cycles of drought since 1999, the current owners, Mr. and Mrs. John C. Malone, have work to restore this living piece of New Mexico history back to its original shape and beauty. We're out here at the T.O. Ranch and this is the final day of our Gate to Plate cattle tour 
And the overwhelming theme for me has been family. The generations upon generations of families working this land, raising cattle, feeding this nation. Quite often I forget I'm in New Mexico. It's, a, it's another world out here. And the ranchers of eastern New Mexico, New Mexico, all over New Mexico, they work hard and they're honest people and they put food on all our tables. So I want to thank, thank all of you for the time. It's been amazing. Wow, it was truly amazing, and I'd like to Beautiful. give a special thanks to the hardworking families that work these ranches for their hospitality, and I'd also like to thank the esteemed and knowledgeable members of the New Mexico Beef Council. And you can always learn more about these families and the New Mexico beef industry by logging on to nmbeef.com. Beautiful Please do so. out there. You know, and I thought it was so cool, too. I, I've seen the movie Temple Grandin. If you haven't seen it, check it out. So neat that they're using her stuff to make things a lot easier she on the She changed cattle the cattle industry forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a and for, and it, for, it was such a, such a in such a good way and a good you know yeah. it's a good cause. So. It is. It's all for a good cause.